Looking to protect your cards? Whether you need sleeves, deck boxes, binders, playmats, or even backpacks, Ultimate Guard has your collection covered. Literally. Premium products offering priceless protection. Visit ultimateguard.com. Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a 4-color Atraxa Grand Unifier deck. The 7-mana 7-7 seven seven Legendary Phyrexian Angel has Flying Vigilance, a Death Touch and Lifelink, and when it enters the battlefield we get to reveal the top 10 cards of our library. For each card type we may put a card of that type from among the revealed cards into our hand. And those types of course include Artifact, Creature, Enchantment, Instant, Land, Planeswalker and Sorcery. And if you take a look at the distribution here, I've got 10 creatures in the deck, 10 instants, 10 sorceries, 10 artifacts, 10 enchantments, and 10 planeswalkers. So we've got a very high chance of finding a ton of cards with Atraxa to put into our hand. So let's go over the entire deck, starting with our one drops, where we've got some cheap hand disruption with both Thoughtseize and Duress. As a side note, I'm not playing a ton of alchemy cards, since I just enjoy playing with old school paper cards instead. The one exception is I do like Key to the Archive quite a bit as a 4 mana accelerant that lets us play with one of these spellbook cards. So if you want to play with Mind Spike or Assemble the Team, those are cards that come to mind that are pretty good if you want to play some more alchemy cards instead. Then a Dark Ritual can give us a bit of a mana boost, especially powerful, and getting one of our ramp artifacts at 4 or 5 mana in play ahead of schedule. Maybe ramp out a Mirari's Wake, which can then double our mana. We've got Cut Down as a cheap removal spell, as well as Source to Plowshares. Wash Away as a 1 mana counter for an opposing commander. This is the only counter spell that I'm playing. You could easily play an Atraxa build with more counter spells and instant speed interaction, but I'm keeping a nice even split across all card types instead. Then Esper Sentinel counts as both a creature and an artifact, so easy to find with Atraxa, and shines against opposing blue decks with a lot of counter spells, but just in general playing an early Sentinel can be a headache for the opponent. And then a Curse of Silence naming the opponent's commander can also be very effective at slowing them down. Then at 2 mana we've got some more spot removal with Go for the Throat, Heartless Act, and the new Shieldred's Edict as an answer to potential Planeswalkers as well. Then we've got more ramp with Explorer, Into the North, as well as Joint Exploration if we play it with Kicker, so it's more of a 3 mana spell in reality, and then it mimics a Grow Spiral in addition to letting you scry to. We've got D Spark as an answer to permanence with mana value 4 or greater, so it can answer a wide range of threats. We've got Sylvan Ranger to find a basic land, just a nice early creature, can maybe protect your Planeswalkers by chumping, and then can help hit your different colors, which is also important in a 4 color deck. Wall of Blossoms, another card that I just like, an 0-4 Defender that draws when it enters. It's another way to protect your Planeswalkers and dig deeper into the deck. And then we've got some more ramp artifacts as well with Arcane Signet, Cold Steel Heart and Mind Stone. And then Hydroid Crisis, not really a 2-drop, but a great mana sink, drawing cards and gaining a life in the process, even if it does get countered. And then at 3 mana, there's both Loran and Knight of Autumn to destroy artifacts or enchantments when they enter. Cultivate gives us another mana boost. Good Corsair of Crufix is both a creature and an enchantment, so also helpful in revealing it to Atraxa. And then we can play Lands of the Top, gaining a life in the process. Murderous Rider also counts as a creature, but in reality we're more interested in using the Swift End Adventure as a removal spell that can take out both creatures and planeswalkers. Elspeth's Nightmare remains very impressive in Historic Brawl, taking out small mana creatures on the first chapter, maybe taking away removal or counter spells on chapter 2, and then cleaning up the graveyards. We've got Narset as a planeswalker to find a non-creature non-land card among the top 4 cards of our library, and then can also shut down card draw from the opponent, so it can be very effective in certain matchups. Touch the Spirit Realm is a removal spell to exile opposing artifacts or creatures, but we also can use the hidden channel mode of potentially flickering our own Atraxa, which can re-enable its Enter the Battlefield ability to maybe find even more cards afterwards. And then we have our Kiora as well, which can help ramp, especially useful with some of our more expensive ramp artifacts, as untapping those can generate more than one extra mana, and then can also draw an additional card when Atraxa enters. Uro, another way to ramp, and can also escape it from the graveyard to present a 6-6 that can draw additional cards and gain life when it attacks. And then a Skyclave Relic can also be kicked to make some indestructible tokens to make more mana. And Celeste is always powerful, giving us some card selection and life gain as it switches between day and night. At 4 mana we've got a few sweeper effects, including Wrath of God and Supreme Verdict. We've got some more Planeswalkers, including Teferi, which is also very good with our ramp artifacts, as we can untap those alongside a land to generate extra mana. As you may have noticed, we don't have many mana creatures in this deck, instead relying on sorceries, instants, and artifacts to ramp, because eventually we may wipe the board, and then we don't want to lose all our mana accelerants. And then the Wandering Emperor can exile tapped creatures, make samurai tokens as well. 
Good Binding the Old Gods, a perfect removal spell that also helps us ramp on the second chapter. Can find our various Trilands, which have the forest subtype as well. And then a Firemind Vessel and Key to the Archive, both making two mana. So those give us a huge mana boost as well. And then a Spellbook is always fun, finding one of those 15 powerful cards to put in hand. Then a Solomon Author Way of Ramping counts as both an artifact and a creature for Atraxa purposes. So we can reveal it alongside another creature or another artifact. And then at 5 mana we've got some powerful sagas, including Elspeth Conquers Death, all three modes are very powerful. We've got Eldest Reborn, which is quite similar, and then a Cruelty of Gix, also another new saga with a read ahead mechanic, so we can start from any different chapter, making the opponent discard, searching up any card in our deck, and eventually reanimating a creature or planeswalker. So sometimes it's fine to let Atraxa go to the graveyard if we can bring it back with Cruelty, Eldest Reborn, or Elspeth Conquers Death. And then a Jace and Teferi, powerful 5 mana planeswalkers that can both draw as well as interact on the board. And then a Gilded Lotus immediately makes 3 mana of any one color, can also help ram towards Atraxa. And Mirari's Wake is just one of my favorite cards, doubling the mana that our lands produce, as well as giving the team a plus 1 plus 1. And then a Time Warp can also be very powerful, especially with a few planeswalkers in play, getting to take an extra turn. And then topping off our curve, a Leyline Binding can be cast for 2 mana most of the time, exiling an opposing permanent at instant speed. Eternal Wanderer can also be very fun with Atraxa, as we can flicker it with the plus 1 ability. And then of course a 0 and the minus 4 offer a ton of utility. We've got a Liliana Dreadhorde General, potentially making each player sacrifice 2 creatures with a minus 4, making zombies and drawing cards with a passive all at the same time. Professor Onyx can also be quite powerful, since we have plenty of instants and sorceries to enable Magecraft. And then a minus 3 gives us more interaction, the plus 1, a source of card advantage. Then we've got Vraska Relic Seeker as another 6 mana Planeswalker, can destroy all sorts of permanents with a minus 3, and then a plus 2 making pirates. And then a Casualties of War, also a staple in any black-green deck that can cast it, destroying artifacts, creatures, enchantments, lands, and planeswalkers all at the same time. And last but not least, we've got our Emergent Ultimatum, which can potentially find three different monocolored cards, and the opponent gets to pick one of them that we put back in our library, and we get to cast the other two for free. So we can often find some of our six mana Planeswalkers, or maybe a Time Warp, or some of our powerful five mana Sagas, all at the same time. And then our mana base is pretty straightforward, just a ton of dual lands. We've got all of the tri lands here as well in our colors. A Fabled Passage to fetch up some basics. And then a few snow-covered basics to find with Into the North and our author search effects. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play, up against Davriel, so a discard deck. And uh, yeah, we've got a hand that could be great if we had green mana. With Dark Ritual quickly ramping out a Mirari's Wake. And that's one way to beat the discard deck, is just to empty your hand and then have a lot of mana available to cast our commander. Without green mana, I don't think I can realistically keep. Let's take a mulligan. Alright, this is better. And then I should probably just passage either forest or island. And island makes sense. And then we can turn to Spiral. Hopefully a ramp towards a Gilded Lotus. Probably no downside to doing it now in case I find a one-man interactive spell. And then we can play a Celestus next turn. Might have to discard Eternal Wanderer here. I think I prefer keeping Casualties as our expensive card. But if they make us discard again, Casualties is probably the next to go. Chase isn't bad. So time for Navriel. And uh, yeah, I think we let go of Jace. Even though Jace can kind of keep up with a discard from Davriel, I would still prefer to get Lotus down. And then Casualties is a way to catch back up, killing Davriel, a creature and a land. Thoughtseize, we can return the favor. Or we can leave it in hand to discard to Davriel, in the hopes of casting a Casualty, so they'll be able to Atraxa anyway. So now I'm thinking 
it's unlikely that our opponent doesn't play another discard effect. So might as well thought seize. And yeah, those are some good cards. No discard, but we can take uh, Dreadhorde General. Uh, Doomblade doesn't kill Atraxa. Infernal Grasp does. So it's either Grasp or Liliana. They're pretty far from casting a Liliana, to be fair. So maybe just take Infernal Grasp. And then we can keep our Atraxa around. And then we should pick up plenty of cards to potentially discard to a Davriel. Take three. Loneliness can hurt. And Teferi essentially pays for itself here. So, don't mind if I do. Play Atraxa. Elspeth Conqueror's Death looks good. Cut down our only instance. And then course our creature. And we'll grab a nice untapped land. So I could still cut down a Thieves Guild Enforcer. And then leave land in hand to discard. Okay, not bad. Kind of prefer the extra black source, but this way we hide a bit of information. Alright, pathway's gone. A mind is a terrific thing to waste. And there's Davriel again. Can get rid of a courser if we'd like, since Conqueror's Death eventually gets back Jace. And now our opponent's in trouble. Can go digging with Teferi, as opposed to work towards an ultimate, which is also an option. Aldous Reborn, pretty good here. Both are answers to Davriel. Maybe I should have gone for Aldous Reborn, since Conqueror's Death is a cleaner answer to Liliana. Although if they Liliana minus, then we still have an Eldest Reborn. And if they plus, Atraxa can just attack. So, hit for 7. And then maybe keep land in hand again. With the Fairy on tapping a Lotus, we've got all the mana we need. Get eaten alive. Exiles Atraxa. Back to the command zone we go. And then we'll make some mana. Replay our trucks up. This time finding Knight of Autumn as our creature, key artifact, and Nightmare Enchantments. And then Ultimatum Sorcery, get an untapped land, and then Maybe a joint exploration over Go for the Throat. Okay, so can play Kicked Exploration or can play Key to the Archive here. Grab a Time Warp, discard a land. And it's going to be pretty difficult for the opponent to recover from this. They're taxed by the second chapter, so they can't even play Liliana. And then next turn we can ultimatum, maybe even time warp in the same turn with a bunch of planeswalkers out. Opponent just passes. Okay. Return. How about a Jace? Work towards an ultimate. I am who I choose to be. 
And then I think we're gonna plus the fairy for mana this turn. Cast a nice juicy emergent ultimatum. And that's gonna prompt a concession. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Minsk and Boo, the 5 mana Planeswalker. Our hand's got potential. Dark Ritual to maybe speed things up. And then our lands will be untapped once we play a Swamp. Wash Away also useful to have. And Archimancer is a good one too, discounting red and green spells by one. And then we can explore. Could now also Curse of Silence. Since I don't expect to need to wash away next turn. And just name their commander. Okay, Arcane Signets into a Lightning Phoenix to hit us for 4. Ooh, Mirari's Wake. That's an interesting draw, so I could Dark Ritual Mirari's Wake. Can we do something afterwards? I guess keep up Wash Away. That's not the worst. And now we have a Mirari's Wake in play. Their opponent can play their commander. If they pay for Curse of Silence, it's going to be a partner's instead. Alright, so take six now. But now we get to untap with essentially eight mana, which is enough for Atraxa. Likely find a blue source to keep up Wash Away. So, once a blue untapped lands, pathway, and then. Artifacts. There's only one enchantment. For instance, go for the throat, probably the best option. And Planeswalker liking both Liliana and Emperor. Liliana's more powerful. And then we'll leave up Wash Away. Could also Kiora and then untap a land still. So that leaves a both go for the throat and wash away. So I may end up killing the partners before anything else. Okay, it's gonna be some woods. That's fine. Initiate. You are not worthy. Can give a creature a double strike. In which case, we're probably just going to go for the throw to Phoenix, assuming they put the counters there. That works. And our opponent explodes. Next turn, Elspeth's Nightmare deals with the partners. Can maybe get our Liliana in play and still keep up a counter spell for their commander. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, up against the Glissa Sunslayer, so enchantments aren't safe. Our hand leaves a bit to be desired, as much as I like the cheap interaction, Thoughtseize and Swords. Don't have green mana for Sylvan Ranger, which we kind of need to hit our land drops. This is better. And probably no need to duress on turn 1, can always cast it after an explore. For opponent goes for a turn one thought sees. I'm regretting not the resting first. Opponent takes our explore. Found a gross spiral. Yeah, I guess it works. Just main phase it so we can also duress. And sign in blood, death sprout. Tosky we wouldn't be able to take out with a heartless act, so that's potentially a concern. Probably just take the Sign in Blood, which is something they can actually cast next turn. 
Opponents could an Arcane Signet. Curse of Silence can name Glissa. Or we could name Toski, which is potentially an even bigger concern. Since we have Heartless Act for Glissa. And then next turn opponent would just play Solemn. And we'll wait on Hydroid until we have a couple more lands in play. Solemn can find a forest. And the game goes on. Into the north. Usually want to avoid getting snow-covered plains because of our ultimatum. So in that case, probably just forests. Keep a Partless Act. Put in place Dusky anyway, so we'll sacrifice our curse. And then we can Heartless Act Solemn if we really want to. Alright, so it didn't line up taking out Glissa here, but uh, at least her opponent hasn't drawn any extra cards of Toski yet. And then now going for Hydroid seems decent, as we'll get to draw two cards. And if they want to take it out with the Death Sprout, then Atraxa might stick around. Okay, there's our Emergent Ultimatum. Speak of the Devil. Hydroid down. Opponent may tap out for Glissa, and then Emergent Ultimatum is good to go. And I can think of a few decent cards here. Liliana Dreadhorde General comes to mind. So they're probably not going to give us our General. Then Conqueror's Death is an answer to Toski. And so we could grab... What else? Eldest Reborn, make them sacrifice their Glissa. Professor Onyx could be good too. Yeah, let's grab Onyx. And this way, Conqueror's Death also threatens to get back our uh, Planeswalker if the opponent manages to answer it. So Exile Toski. And Onyx deals with Glissa. And then we still have a Planeswalker and a Saga left over. Connections is fine. And there's Galissa once again. Okay, so... Plus Onyx. Finding Teferi. Can play Teferi. Still Edict. And our opponent has seen enough. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Tamyo Completed Sage, and our hand is a bit light on early ramp, so we'll take a mulligan. This is not perfect, but probably a keep. Corsair can help hit my land drops. And we've got a cut down for an early elf. Does potentially mean not being able to play Corsair on curve. I think we just go tapped chapel and then turn two cut down tapped grove and then turn three I'm guaranteed courser. Okay, replicating ring. Wouldn't be able to grow spiral anyways, so cut down mystic. We have quite a few answers to planeswalkers. Unlikely to pressure time you with our creatures since they can tamp those down as well. Okay, Sentinel could be nice. So I could Sentinel and Grow Spiral. Or we can just play Corsair. And Blue Green unlikely to kill Corsair, so it's going to provide quite a bit of value. Now let's go with Corsair. Binding coming up. So hopefully there's a land following it. And then Binding can take care of Tamiyo. Okay, just a Mind Stone. So in that case, play Sentinel, and then we can still grow Spiral. And then there might be a land on top I can play. Okay. So 
next turn we can still binding Tamiya before potential ultimate. And an Elder Gargroth. Great target for a Gopher to throw it as well. Get our free value. And then now we have quite a few options. Tamyo doesn't necessarily ultimate yet, so might be better off taking out Gergroth. Could also ramp with Mirari's Wake. Gergroth does have Vigilance, so no exiling it with Wandering Emperor, although possible her opponent has a protection spell in place. But uh, yeah, lots well, still binding. Take out Gergroth. And they did have a Tamiya safekeeping. Alright, at least we get to draw off Sentinel. Safekeeping also would have worked on Tamiya since it's target permanent. So, yeah, they get to keep their creature and their planeswalker. Although go for the throw, it's still an answer. You cannot delay your and then even if they were to somehow ultimate Tamiya, we still have answers to the notebook itself. Take six. And an Oracle dies to Elspeth's Nightmare. But not before they get to play some lands off the top. Alrighty, sadly I have to search, shuffling away that top card. Get a try land. Still a swamp on top. Conqueror's Death, also a decent answer. So how much mana do we have? Five, six, seven. So if I were to Mirari's Wake first, I'll still have four mana left, enough for go for the throat into the north, or we could Elspeth's Nightmare, Oracle, go for the throat Gargroth, attack Tamiya for one. Opponent did play the land untapped, so they might have something in hand to interact here. So I think we'll kick things off with a Nightmare. See if that baits out a response. Heroic Intervention. Alright, so in response, I probably go for the Throat Gergroth. At least take that out. Opponent pays a Sentinel tax. Nightmare doesn't kill anything, so next turn they can ultimate. Could still keep Conqueror's Death as a potential answer to Oracle. Or we could into the north to have more mana for Mirari's Wake, which then sets up Atraxa to take over. That seems fine as well. And so what do we like? An extra blue source, perhaps? No attacks. Opponent also drew Evolution Sage, so they can maybe get even more loyalty on Tamyo before uh, ultimating, but opponent goes for an emblem. And then now an iteration, paying the Sentinel tax can bounce or Courser. They still haven't drawn with the uh, Notebook, because they wanted to play Land of the Top, Proliferate, so they get to enable the Saga again if they'd like. And now a Wash Away in hand. Yeah, one mana counter to a Trunks, that's nice. And now a Dryad on top. Alright, so it looks like they're done for the turn at least. Replicating Ring also close to making a ton of extra mana. And Source to draw. So it can actually take the Wash away with second chapter, so that works out nicely. And then now, don't mind getting the Mirari's Wake going for playing Atraxa, still have plenty of cards in hand. And then I'll be able to play Swords on Oracle. Maybe replay Corsair. The spark on top. Okay, so if I play Narset, I can still swords. Then we know we can pick up a D spark at least. Fraska's not bad either. Is that better? I think we'll be fine with a D spark. Just grab the cheap answer when Atraxa can pull us ahead. And then, what does the Living Breakthrough do? 
Don't think that matters too much. It's just a way to pressure Narset as a main drawback. But I don't think we'll need Narset. So just exile Oracle now. Okay. And then no attacks. So our opponent gets all their mana from Replicated Ring. They can still draw with Notebook. But Narset stops that, so they had to attack it first. Yeah, maybe there was a reason to actually kill the Breakthrough, protecting Narset, which stops the Notebook from being effective. And the yeah, opponent has seen enough. Next turn we get to untap with a million mana, play Atraxa, and probably take over, destroying the Notebook in the process. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, up against Myria, so red-green artifacts. And what do we think of our hand? Well, binding answers, artifacts potentially. So, it's not the worst. Probably kick things off with Fabled Passage. Have all our colors, but might need double black. So I'll grab a swamp. Okay, can edict the mystic here. And then next turn play kicked exploration. Okay, now Elspeth's Nightmare is looking good. Kill Florahedron, next turn have a look. Synthesizer's fine. Finding the boots to protect their commander. But looks like they're missing a land, perhaps. Lots of zero drops. And we can still take a safekeeping. Alright, so pass a turn. I don't think we need to binding anything. And then hope to find a land with our scry to and draw. Put an cycling chromatic sphere. And I'll take a land. Don't need the spark. Okay, and then uh, Cruelty could take away Burgi before they get a chance to cast it. Leaving them with a key to the archive. Alright, time for Miria. Mox Amber makes mana. And they can use a second ability for card advantage. Inspiring Statuary. Okay, so what do we want to search for here? Casualties of War comes to mind. Can blow up artifact land creature at some point. And then for now, Binding Myria. Vraska can also answer artifacts. So there's Myria again. Finds a land. Get to bring back Burgi and search for a tri land. Okay, so time for casualties. Artifact, creature, and land. Statuary, Myria, Stomping Ground. And that may be too much for opponents to overcome. Next turn it's time for Atraxa. As our opponent goes digging with the Synthesizer. And our opponent packs it in, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, up against the Eternal Wonder, and we've got Elspeth Tribal here with a bit of ramp, so sign me up. 
The opponent probably playing some creatures with nice ETB effects to flicker with a plus one. But generally expect a pretty controlling deck. Joint Exploration joins Explorer and Grow Spiral to put extra lands in play. Chronicler is a good one. Doesn't die to Elspeth's Nightmare. And now I don't want to Grow Spiral, so we'll Explore instead. Okay, next turn we can Key. Restoration can also get back Chronicler, so don't want to answer it right away. Possible the opponent has a way to remove our key to the archive, so could be an advantage to casting a joint exploration instead to guarantee the ramp. Although key finding a card from the spellbook could also come in handy. Kiora also multicolor for Chronicler. So yeah, tricky spot. I think we just key. And then both Day of Judgment and Time Warp are options. Day of Judgment is an answer to the 3-1. Time Warp admittedly could be more powerful. And then at this point Gross Spiral can go. Still think Nightmare is going to be effective. Point will play a smaller creature later. And yeah, we see Asper Sentinel brought back with uh, Restoration here. So that could be our target for Nightmare. And a Wandering Emperor. Okay, points on the beatdown plan. Remember your training. So Day of Judgment could have been nice as well. Now, I could also Conquer's Death the Wandering Emperor. Could play a Liliana. Opponent gets to drop Sentinel, but then we get to clear the board. Next turn, Pwn gets Architect, and then we can maybe Conquer's Death, Wandering Emperor, and then Time Warp with an active Planeswalker could be quite powerful. Kiora Untapping Key, also sequence we have to consider, although it would draw with Chronicler. So, all things considered, maybe Liliana, minus four, isn't so bad here, even though Pwn gets to draw off Sentinel. And then Nightmare could also answer a Samurai from Emperor. Five mana left, not quite enough for Eternal Wanderer. But they might have an answer to Liliana. And then I'm thinking Kiora, untap key, cast Time Warp. Borrow time goes after our Planeswalker. Kiora into Time Warp, still decent, since then we get to essentially untap with a Kiora, which is plus two mana. Okay, land is good. So we could already cast an Atraxa here, or we can control the board a little bit more. Elspeth conquers death. Exile borrow time, get back our Liliana. Sounds like a good starting point. And then we could minus four. Get out of my way. Untap key. And then just Narset, I think. That misses. That's fine. Okay. So the board looks a lot cleaner now. We've got three active planeswalkers. And next turn we might play Atraxa. Ooh, Cataclysmic Gearhulk. Actually one of the better cards they could have played here. Since they get to leave us with a single planeswalker. Conqueror's Death will eventually get a planeswalker back as well. So maybe actually keep Kiora to make sure we can cast Atraxa. And then we'll eventually get back... Our uh, Dreadhorde General. May your Cruelty, also a nice one. This opponent is now taxed by Chapter 2. And then Atraxa can then untap Key again and likely find a land to still play Nightmare. 
Even get to draw Cura. Thoughtseize is nice. Although casualties might be better. Yeah, there is an embarrassment of riches here. Corsair can be our enchantment, Hydroid or a creature. And our opponent has seen enough after taking a look at the revealed cards. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing a Vivian Monsters Advocate. So mono green, our hand seems decent. Gross Parallel and Corsair to hit our early land drops. And casualties can potentially deal with the opponent's commander. Opponent off to a quick start. And sure. We'll uh, Gross Parallel put in a tapped garden. And ramping with cards like Rose Parallel, also quite effective alongside Mirari's Wake, although now the Silver Bank will require an answer before we get our enchantments in play. Corsair also an enchantment creature, so Elder can take it out. So yeah, this could be a little awkward. I think we just hope to exile Elder with a Wandering Emperor instead. Opponent with a Signet. And a Ronos. Okay. Elder can ramp. Ronos also something I wouldn't mind exiling with Emperor since it's indestructible. But it's more important to deal with Elder now. I'm not You're just and then now we can hope to keep our enchantments around. So Mirari's Wake sets up the most powerful subsequent turn. Could also go Celestus plus Corsair, but uh, yeah, let's go big here. Make sure this enters untapped. And I'll just make a token. Until next time, then. We must protect the people. And then we can Casualties of War regardless next turn, even if they answer Mirari's Wake. So seeing Vivian is nice. We'll be able to take that out. Like you to meet my friend. Stump. They can pump the beast, so Ronos gets to attack. Okay, it's go time. Don't think we need to attract that quite yet, but lots of casualties. And then I can still, at the very least, play Corsair. And we've got Artifact, Creature, Land, and Planeswalker to take out. Creature will be probably the beast token, could also go for druid. Seems I need to evolve too. And then I can Celestus into Corsair, although I should not have trusted the auto tapper in that case. That's okay, we'll just activate Celestus instead, and we get to draw and discard. The spark could be useful. Might actually want to just keep the land now, since uh, especially if they blow up Mirari's Wake, we might need it to cast the Truxa. Okay, Vorinclex opponents getting in for 11 here. Although the spark an answer to the monstrous raider. Uro's not bad either. So I think I'll let the auto tapper decide my fate here with Atraxa. Found a supreme verdict. Swords, a cheap answer to the indestructible Ronas. Liliana. So we should be good here. And the murderous rider, a removal spell that counts as a creature. Okay, so can Swords Ronos. And then Murder Strider Vorinclex if we'd like, or despark it. Both are fine. And then I can still Uro. Just have to be careful with how we tap our mana. And don't want to play Liliana into a Vorinclex.
Alright, that looks okay. And I'll kill the elf while we're here. Harmonize to draw three. Uru also has excellent synergy with Liliana, since if you play it and it dies, you get to draw. So, plenty of synergy to go around. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing the Abomination of Lenoir, so Elf, Tribal, slash Graveyard. And we've got a pretty solid hand. Probably Farmland on one. Turn to Cold Steel Heart. And we could name either blue or maybe green, since we do need double green and double blue at some point. I'll start with green. Alright, now we can go for blue. Want to avoid playing Pathway on white in case of Emergent Ultimatum. Could also take out Elvish Mystic now. Picked up another blue source, so I don't think this really matters anymore. Glissa, that's worth taking out, and a Narnam Renegade. Okay, Binding helps us ramp, so take out Glissa here. Next room we can Lotus into a Gopher the Throat, and then we're on our way to casting an Atraxa. Okay, Rex Age goes after Cold Steel Heart, so that's going to slow down our Lotus by a turn. Get to find a try land. And if they play the Abomination, I might take it out. Although we could also now use the Eternal Wanderer, leave them with a single elf. Might still be better off ramping with Gilded Lotus, in which case I'm happy to take out the Abomination. Casualties is pretty good too, although not too many targets for it. So I'll just go Lotus. And then next turn maybe Atraxa. Eternal Wanderer can also flicker Atraxa once it's in play, in case we need more card advantage. Can still cast Atraxa even if they destroy my Gilded Lotus. And a Gem Racer is going to do exactly that. Okay. Somewhat tempting to casualties blow up the forest and the Elvish Mystic to cut off their green, but just casting an Atraxa should be good enough here. We are taking six. And it is realistic for them to have some removal here. Taking out Atraxa, so then we're scheduled to take another seven, but uh, should still be able to survive, and then with the uh, answers we find off Atraxa, we should be in a good shape. Or we can just casualties anyway here. And take it slow. Take out Gem Razor in a forest. Might be safer. Wanna wait on Eternal Wander until we can protect it a bit better. As opposed to leaving them with an elf and then dying right away. Nylia discounting creature spells. Now it might be time for Atraxa. Okay, Thoughtseize we can still cast. Although, Emergent Ultimatum probably the better sorcery. The fairies are only Planeswalker. They should enter untapped. So I guess we're one mana short of ritualing out a key right now. So, doesn't really matter here. And then Teferi can untap key right away as well. We'll see if they can answer Atraxa. Okay, Heartless Act kills Atraxa. And... We'll still take at least three. Visionary draws. Getting closer to animating Nylia. Just take two for now. 
So we can ultimate them, and then we still have the mana to ritual out a key to the archive. Could also do that first in case we maybe find a time warp, so I can cast that right away. Alright, and our opponent has seen enough. Of course, they get to see our ultimatum in hand, so they know what's incoming. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, up against Nicol Bolas, God Pharaoh, Grixis Control. My hand's decent, could use a bit more early ramp, but uh, Solemn and Vessel on four, both quite useful, and expect the opponent to have some artifacts that Knight can take out. Okay, nice, picked up Celestus. And then we should get more mileage out of Atraxa than our opponent gets out of Nicol Bolas. So counter spells are probably the main concern here. Falky can snipe a Solemn or a Knight. Although they won't be able to get the ETB effects even if they copy with Valky. So that's fine. The main thing they gain here is a lot of information about my hand. So they might take the Knight if they have an artifact they want to play out soon. And we're on Celestus into maybe a Vessel. Midnight Clock. Could have been destroyed by Night. Binding also a nice answer here. Could imply a one mana spell pierce or maybe a bound spell. Either way. We're ramping nicely. Opponent's doing the same. Nicol Bolas at 4 mana to make his discard. Well, I kind of like all my cards. Next turn I might just bind Nicol Bolas. So maybe don't need Vessel as much. At least Solemn can uh, trade for Valky or protect Vraska. Even though Vessel ramps more for Atraxa purposes. I'm just a bit scared of artifact removal, which would feel pretty bad here. Could also binding the Midnight Clock to delay Nicol Bolas, although next turn we'll still be able to Vraska now to potentially deal with that. Possible they also have a Pact of Negation in hand, the zero mana counterspell. So they might be sandbagging that one to maybe counter Vraska or Atraxa. And yeah, Pact on Atraxa could be effective. We'll get to ramp with our second chapter. So I can curve Vraska into Atraxa. Thoughtseize to take away Vraska. So some good back and forth here. But the commanders are gonna enter the battlefield soon. Nightmare was a great draw. Get to take out Valky. Get back our Knight of Autumn. Which threatens to blow up Midnight Clock. And we can potentially take away a Pact of Negation. So opponent may be forced to just counter it now. And destroy an artifact. Yeah, can't think of many better top decks. So now opponents cannot cast Nicol Bolas. We're on the board. And we can have a look next turn to take away Counterspell with a second chapter. So that was incredibly backbreaking, and our opponent scoops it up. Awesome. So didn't even need Atraxa this game, although the implication is always there that Atraxa is gonna take over the late game. So yeah, this 4-color Atraxa deck is incredibly impressive, probably the most powerful Brawl deck I've played in recent memory, and I expect it to be bumped into the Hell queue soon enough, where it's gonna face the likes of Rusko, Teferi, Kinnon, and friends. So now is the time to enjoy those easy wins, because as soon as you face more counter spells, the matchups become a lot tougher. So that's gonna do it for today's gameplay, wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day!
I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.